Welcome to part one of your introduction to C-sharp. In this video, we're going to talk about variables, output, and input to the console. Following this video, you should be able to complete the part one video quiz in Schoology. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up Visual Studio, and what you'll see is the start page. A quick way to get started would be to click on New Project which is going to give you this pop-up window. And we're programming in Visual C Sharp. So we're going to click on this, and then we're going to click on the console application here. Down here, we have to name it. I'm just going to leave it as console app one. This is where you are saving it. So perhaps either the desktop or my documents is a common place to save, and then click OK. I already have one started, so I'm going to open up that one. And you'll see a screen like this. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to briefly kind of describe what's going on here in the code view, and then in class or in subsequent videos, I'll show you the rest of Visual Studio. So you might ask, what is all this stuff up here? Well, these are code libraries. So uh, C Sharp comes with a bunch of libraries that tell your program how to interact with the computer, how to make a form, how to uh, do this and that. And we can utilize these libraries so that making a program moves along a lot faster. We can just start developing and borrow code out of these libraries uh, without having to develop and test it ourselves. So that's kind of nice. So for instance, like this uh, library right here, the system library, uh, is already going to tell our program how it's going to interact with, for instance, the keyboard uh, and how to display a console window, those kinds of things. And we can just go on our merry way and tell it what we want to put in that window. Okay, below that you're going to see these blocks of code, which are the namespace, the class, and this thing called static void main. We're going to be putting all of our code inside the main method. So the main method is where this program is going to start executing. And the name of this program, by default, in Visual Studio is called program. And program is a class. So what is a class? A class is a template of a program. And C Sharp is object oriented. That means that I can take this template and then replicate it, which is called instantiation, as many times as I want. I could load it into memory and then create several copies of whatever this program does. And all classes, so all of these classes, have to fit inside of a, another container called a namespace. And a namespace allows us to organize our code, and it also helps prevent what are known as naming collisions. So pretend I'm making a sports program and I have a uh, part of a program that uh, creates a football game and then I also have a part of a program that makes a basketball game and I also have part of a program that makes a baseball game. Each one of those namespaces, football, basketball, baseball, could have a class called player. But those classes cannot have several classes named player. You can only have one. So that's why those namespaces are important. Each class could then uh, be describing the subtle differences between a baseball player, a football player, and a uh, basketball player. So uh, as we move forward, you're going to have classes that fit into a namespace and where the code will begin to execute is in something called a main method. So let's start putting code right here on line 13. So when you declare and create a variable, it's going to follow a pattern. So I'm going to put a comment here, and I can create a comment with two forward-leaning slashes. And this is the pattern that a variable declaration takes on. You have something called a data type. So I'm going to put that as one word. And then you have a variable name, like this. Optionally, you can then give it a value by using the assignment operator. That looks like the equal sign. And then give it a value. 
So I'm going to put value. Finally, you have to put a semicolon at the end. So this is the pattern of creating a variable. So an example would be, for instance, a data type would be something like a whole number. And a whole number is called an integer. And it's abbreviated int, I-N-T. And I can give it any name that I want. I'm going to call this one number and then put a semicolon. Another way to do that, I could call this um, int num, and then I could say equals one. All right, so now here's the difference between these two. This one, you can see a green squiggly line, and that's because it's declared, but it's, it's not holding any value whatsoever. It's not used either. So when I hover over it, it's telling me that, that uh, I have declared it, but I haven't utilized it yet in my program. And that's fine, because we only have two lines of code so far. Uh, and this uh, little squiggly line here is going to tell me the same thing. But this is the pattern. Now, other types of variables that we might have would be like something like a string. And I could say my string name is going to be message. And I could give it a value right now, or I don't have to. I could put a semicolon right here. But let's say I give it a value of hello world, and then I put a semicolon at the end. Another common one that's used is called bool. A bool represents a boolean true-false value. And usually if you name something a boolean, it starts off with a verb that could be like is or does or has. So if I had a boolean, I could call something is correct. So that means, did they get it correct? Did they get it uh, not correct? Did they, is it right? Is it wrong? So I can give it a value of false, or I could give it a value of true. Those are the only two values that a Boolean can hold. Um, another uh, example of declaring a variable name would be to use a complex object. That means that it's going to be something like a class. So if I was going to create a class level variable, it might be something like object, and I might nickname it OBJ for short. Then I would have to create it. I could either, uh, if I just put a semicolon right here, this means that this object is not really pointing to anything. Uh, it's not referring to a particular uh, object in memory. Instead, I could say it's a new copy of an object in memory, like this. OK, so this, again, is a variable. And it's very similar to the ones above. But in this case, you'll see that these ones right here are a little different. They have a dark blue color, and then this one has a light blue color. And that's because this one ref uh, represents a complex object, and that those things are like classes. And we'll get into more detail later on about those differences. But basically, these are all variables. We can use them and declare them um, the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and just take out these two, and let's use the hello world to keep going. So if I wanted to output the message hello world to my console window, I could give an instruction to the computer called console.writeline. And I also use the tab key here to autocomplete. And in, in between quotes here, we're going to put whatever we want to say. So I could say, uh, in here, hello from C sharp, exclamation point. Now to run this little program, I'm going to go up here to the debug menu and click start without debugging. And when I do that, you're going to see hello from C sharp printed up here. But what if I wanted to use that variable in here? Well, I'm just going to take out these double quotes with the string hello from C sharp, exclamation point, and I would just put my message in here instead. Because this is really representative of that. So this is really what's going to be 
displayed in console right line. So let me go ahead and do this again. I'm going to go ahead and click my debug, start without debugging. And it says hello world right here. And when I push enter, on that console window, there are no commands left to execute, so the, the program is complete and the window will disappear. So, so far, our computer program has made one variable called message and it holds the value of hello world and it outputs to our console that message. But what if we wanted to interact with this computer a little bit more? We want the user of this program to type something back to our computer program. To do that, we're going to need to uh, declare a second variable and then hold the value of whatever they type into the console window. So we're going to group together our variables at the top of any method or class that we create. So up here, I'm going to make another string. It's going to be called input, but I don't know what it's going to be right now, so I can't assign it a value like I did with message. Then below console, I'm going to say input is going to hold the value of console.readline. Now, console.readline, if I were to hover over this, at the very top of, the, of this little flyout, it says it's a string. So here I am putting a string inside of a container that is supposed to hold a string. So these two things need to match. Whenever I use the assignment operator, the data type that this holds has to match whatever I'm giving it over here on the right side of this operator. Just like up here. Here I said that message is a string. So I gave it a string. Now this is going to await us in the console to type something and then it will put it in. So let's process whatever they input next and say something in return. So console.writeline again would allow us to output what we um, want to process. So here I'm going to put another literal string and it's going to say you said colon space and then I'm going to add on the value of input. This is called concatenation when you merge together strings into a single string like this. So this is a literal string and input represents a literal string. So I'm just going to put a semicolon at the end and now I have a program that's going to say something we get to say something back and it's going to basically repeat it back to us like a parrot. So I'm going to go ahead and click debug, start without debugging, and it says hello world. If I said hello back, exclamation point, it's going to parrot back to me. You said hello back as one continuous string of characters. I'm going to go ahead and push enter. And since there are no commands left to execute. The program assumes that it's done and closes out the window. Okay, that finishes up part one, declaring and using variables and input and output to the console. So at this point, go to the part one video quiz and answer the questions that you find there.